Hi everyone, I'm, I'm Dan Murphy. I'm a postdoc in the Corvo lab in the pathology department. Um, I live in Lafayette Square here in St. Louis with my fiance and our two cats, Dash and Lily. They're, they're coming around to me after, after living together for a little over a year, finally starting to <laughs> accept me as a member of the house, which is, which is real nice. Um, what else? I have a pretty big family. I'm very close with them from, from the Midwest area, so I like St. Louis a lot. In my research, I've been, uh, I, I guess even as, as far back as graduate school, I've been focused on kind of uncovering the mechanisms that uh, really drive cell type identity and comparing two very closely related cell types to try to kind of figure out how it is that uh, they define themselves from, from one another and perform whatever their specific task is. And we use the retina for that as kind of a more accessible model uh, of the central nervous system. So it, I guess more specifically, I've been kind of focused on um, uh, cis regulatory mechanisms of you know, how enhancers are driving what particular genes to uh, gene expression to which uh, can be even if there's very small few few differentially expressed genes between closely related cells uh, those those small differences can have a huge impact and it's important to fully understand them to kind of know and, and um, have, a, have a good understanding of the cell types that you're working with but all of this information hopefully will be very useful for developing kind of uh, therapeutic strategies for, for blinding genetic blinding diseases. So the, the, pandemic, the pandemic was of course pretty rough, but I think I was uh, very, very lucky in that I uh, was able to kind of continue trying to, to make some progress and work kind of throughout. It was, it was a, a big challenge to kind of maintain, you know, the animals we would work with a lot of different mouse models, so um, keeping them uh, throughout the pandemic was a little bit of a challenge, but otherwise I, I kind of was able to spend all of the time working from home and writing a grant, which didn't get funded, but writing a K99 is a very, very useful kind of living document that I think helped me uh, a lot to, you know, plan for the next three years in the future, and I, you know, I still reference it several times. So when I'm not in lab, I like to I like to cook. I like to you know get out in the sun and try to get some exercise. I'm a big fan of, of reading. You know, when I'm not reading science, I like to read you know, science fiction, <laughs> and all sorts of other types of fiction as well. And um, Often I like to you know, drink a few beers while reading. I'm a, a big fan of the St. Louis craft beer scene, I guess, and um, been, been uh, started doing some home brewing, but it's been a while since I've gotten back into that hobby, but hopefully sometime soon. So I um, start with craft beer, because I really, there's just a lot to, to think about there. Uh, my, I think my favorite beers in St. Louis, some of them anyway, come from Side Project in Maplewood. And my, my brother lives within walking distance of that brewery, which I'm, I'm glad he does, because if I did, it would be kind of dangerous, I think. Uh, so they make a lot of really, really good stuff. And otherwise, I like, I like Modern a lot, like Rockwell. Um, I'm a big fan of lighter beers these days, especially in the summer, and they all make something kind of easy drinking, but really still flavorful. Um, yeah, there's there's all sorts of different cool beer styles in the, in the region, so. Uh, as far as books, I guess the one that I often recommend is, uh, I was, I'm a huge fan of Stephen King, and uh, the Dark Tower series that he wrote is kind of like, like his version of uh, an epic J.R.R. Tolkien style um, epic fantasy series and it's really really good they made a terrible movie out of the first book which i wouldn't recommend but uh definitely recommend those books i've been trying to reread them for the longest time but it's kind of a massive undertaking so it might take me a long time
So other than just working in, in lab, I'm also pretty active, or I've been active in, in Whoops. I think I joined the group my second year as a postdoc. And the thing I really like about it is, you know, the sense of community that you feel as a postdoc. I think that's that's very important. It's something that you get in graduate school with, you know, with the, your classmates and everything. But uh, often as a postdoc, you just kind of you're brought in and uh, you don't have that community sense until you kind of go find it. And whoops, it's been great for that. It's, it's a lot of fun to help set up uh, events that, you know, just bring together postdocs within the WashU community. And I'm uh, other than whoops. I'm also part of uh, Inprint, which is a. It's been really great to kind of get more experience in editing, you know, scientific manuscripts and, and grants. It's, I think it's helped my writing a lot, and uh, I've learned a lot from it. And the, the schema design team as well, part of Inprint. It's uh, very useful for kind of getting some of the uh, skills in, in vector graphics and making you know really polished looking figures. I guess my advice to postdocs would kind of go hand in hand with uh, the stuff I was describing is, you know, extra curricular lab activities. Um, you, you really have to kind of seek those out, but I would, I would, my advice would be to spend, especially part of your early postdoc, you know, you might be really focused on getting that first publication or, or you know, ramping up your research, but it's important to kind of explore all the opportunities that are around WashU to to you know get get new skills skills and like you know leadership and speaking and writing things like that uh, that can be very useful and, and helpful for you know whatever your career development trajectory looks like so my plans after my postdoc have always been kind of vague and unfortunately they're, they're still a little bit vague but I uh, have always wanted to stay within kind of academia and pretty soon here I'll be transitioning to staff scientist and I'm kind of working towards uh, maybe getting a little bit more experience in teaching but um, pursuing and, and kind of doing informational interviews and, and um, getting an idea of uh, a little bit more like leadership roles in, in lab management and, and being a staff scientist I think is where I'm my immediate kind of trajectory is looking like.